The U.S. Constitution is a Scam, Part 1, by Humongous. Quote, It's all about money, not freedom, y'all, okay? Nothing to do with fucking freedom. If you think you're free, try going somewhere without fucking money, okay? Unquote. Bill Hicks. The United States Constitution is not valid. Thus, you are not bound by it. This is something most people don't know. The Constitution is a contract between government and citizenry. Such is clear. In this document, rules are established regarding how the bureaucracy will operate and the populace will conduct itself. One of the striking inconsistencies regarding the Constitution is the benefits bestowed upon government at the expense of the population. Via the above agreement, bureaucracy reaps rewards while the masses receive nothing in return. Don't believe me? Consider the following. Congress can tax you. Can you tax Congress? If you don't pay these taxes, the government can extort from you, i.e. steal your home, your cars, your bank accounts, etc. Can you do the same to the government? The U.S. hegemony, quote-unquote, magically makes laws you're forced to abide by. Can you create statutes out of thin air that bind it? Moreover, if this bureaucracy doesn't adhere to your mandates, can you throw it in jail? The answer to the above question is no. So why would you sign such a lopsided pact? Do you often find yourself scrawling your name in agreement on obviously unbalanced arrangements? Let me get this straight. You're going to force me to do things that only benefit you? Yep. And you're going to charge me for this coercion? That's right. On top of this, if I don't pay, you've given yourself the power to throw me in prison? You got it. Where do I sign? Speaking of signatures, when in this fucked up system we refer to as quote-unquote legal are contracts binding? When you sign them, of course. Being the U.S. Constitution is a contract, did you sign it? I know I didn't. In fact, None of the common citizenry signed the fucking Constitution. Wait, I thought this was a democracy. You know, a government by the people. If none of the people signed its main mandate, how can it be anything but a government by somebody else? Since none of the common populace, neither alive during its inception nor kicking today, signed the Constitution, how can we, the people, be bound by it? Only those who did sign it, politicians who've been dead hundreds of years, should be obligated to it. Like a fully charged digital camera, you're getting the picture. So a bunch of monetarily affluent psychopaths, many of them slave owners, scrawled their signatures on this agreement that imprisons us on our behalf. Ask yourself, who doesn't trust a slave owner? Somebody willing to subjugate another person is willing to subjugate you, since you're another person. Why then wouldn't you expect a group of rich overlords to attempt to enslave the population of an entire country? We're talking deal of a lifetime here. Individually, they may have owned a few hundred folk at most. With the implementation of their constitution, they had the opportunity to own a few million. According to No Treason, the Constitution of No Authority, by advocate of natural law, Lysander Spooner, quote, 
It is a general principle of law and reason that a written instrument binds no one until he has signed it. This principle is so inflexible a one that even though a man is unable to write his name, he must still, quote, make his mark, unquote, before he is bound by a written contract. This custom was established years ago when few men could write their names, when a clerk, that is, a man who could write, was so rare and valuable a person that even if he were guilty of high crimes, he was entitled to pardon, on the ground that the public could not afford to lose his services. Even at that time, a written contract must be signed, and men who could not write either made their mark or sign their contracts by stamping their seals upon wax affixed to the parchment on which their contracts were written. Hence, the custom of affixing seals that has continued to this time. Unquote. What's more, the U.S. Constitution was enacted hundreds of years ago, before you or I were born, let alone old enough to sign anything. How can a contract created centuries ago bind you, me, or anyone else living today? Wouldn't we have to be provided a copy of this agreement and then given the choice to sign it on our own before we were obligated by it? Typically, again, according to our insane code of quote-unquote legalities, we're not bound by contracts unless we're sent copies of them. Were you provided a copy of the Constitution? I wasn't. Hence, according to the quote-unquote rules we've created for ourselves, this dissolute document isn't binding upon us. If I was sent a copy of this insanity, there's no way I'd sign such a forfeiture of my natural abilities. Abandon the freedom we all possess prior to being under government rule? I'll pass like soft stool through a greased sphincter. Again, in 1870, Lysander Spooner summed up the situation. Quote, Moreover, a written instrument must, in law and reason, not only be signed, but must also be delivered to the party, or to someone for him, in whose favor it is made, before it can bind the party making it. The signing is of no effect, unless the instrument be also delivered. The Constitution was not only never signed by anybody, but it was never delivered by anybody or to anybody's agent or attorney. It can therefore be of no more validity as a contract than can any other instrument that was never signed or delivered." Unquote. If you don't receive a copy of your phone bill, how can you pay it? Moreover, how can you be bound by it? You can easily win the case you were not provided proper notification of this contract, which is the reason citizens aren't bequeathed copies of the Constitution. If they were, few would be stupid enough to sign them. To quote Lysander Spooner, quote, if the people of this country wish to maintain such a government as the Constitution describes, there is no reason in the world why they should not sign the instrument itself and thus make known their wishes in an open, authentic manner. But the people have never been asked to sign it, and the only reason why they have never been asked to sign it has been that it is not what any sensible man wants for himself nor such as he has any right to impose upon others. It is, to all moral intents and purposes, as destitute of obligations as the compacts which robbers and thieves and pirates enter into with each other, but never sign." Unquote. Are we to believe powers, self-bequeathed, those who created the Constitution, magically transfer to their descendants? Since a bunch of slave owners gave themselves the right to rule our ancestors, their lineage today has the right to rule us? The more you research the U.S. Constitution, 
the more you realize it's just another tool for control. It's no different than any other corrupt government's dogma employed to enslave its citizenry. The Constitution isn't even better camouflaged than the propaganda promulgated by other regimes. Are we foolish enough to believe Hitler informed the German populace they were mass murderers annihilating innocent men, women, and children? Of course Adolf spun his diabolical designs to make genocide delicious, a benefit of the greater good. And the people obviously bought it. No matter how evil Der Fuhrer was, he could not have killed millions of humans himself. He would have required the population of a country willing to pull the triggers for him. The same holds true for George Bush or Barack Obama. Both are psychopathic mass murderers, but it would have been impossible for these two clowns to exterminate over two and a half million people in Iraq if U.S. soldiers hadn't done it for them. In the words of songwriter Donovan, quote, And he's fighting for democracy. He's fighting for the Reds. He says it's for the peace of all. He's the one who must decide who's to live and who's to die and he never sees the writing on the wall. But without him, how would Hitler have condemned them at Dachau? Without him, Caesar would have stood alone. He's the one who gives his body as a weapon of the war, and without him, all this killing cannot go on. He's the universal soldier, and he really is to blame. Unquote. Donovan Universal Soldier.